In this video, we're going to tell you about the equipment that we use while we're out investigating. Does that sound good? Sounds like an awesome idea. So many people have questions. I know. Here we go. Well, hello there, pair of peeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels Live. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. Oh, I'm sorry. I was excited because my thing was making noise. I was watching videos earlier. Let's Mine is Mary Ann Donnelly, oh, and I'm it? your co-host. Hello, everybody. How are you doing this evening? <laughs> Hopefully things pick up better. I was watching YouTube all day, so I literally had the audio on, and I normally don't have the audio on. That's okay. You guys seeing us all right? Because it's saying that the stream's bad, but, you know, we started off to bad. a rocky Sean's start. Red, but, you, you know, know, it is what it is. We're doing this video because a good friend of ours gave me this idea when she asked, hey, what does that mean? What's that mean, that device that you're using? And I'm talking about Happy Trails Hiking. K over at Happy Trails Hiking. If you haven't checked out her channel, she's in chat. There she is right there. Woohoo! Um, but she said, you know, you're talking about these devices and stuff in your video, and I don't know what that means. Could you explain that and tell me what it means? So I thought, okay, let's do a video. Then I thought, you know what, let's make it easier on Sean and make it a live video so I don't have to edit. Gotcha. Now I get it. That's why we're doing this tonight. So Now you see what's going I on? I do. Inspire John's here, and he yeah. says... Inspire John, stick around. Marianne's got something for you. He says, Proton Pack. Oh. Marianne's got something. I do. For you I have something special pack. for you. And by the way, Boris back here is wearing his proton pack. He's got it on. <laughs> <laughs> so <Thank> this. You. <laughs> so this video is for uh, those who aren't type, sh you know, not sure about the paranormal or understand the devices. Um, if you are into the paranormal and you're watching. Uh, especially in chat, please let us know if you use these devices and the kind of, um, you know, information that you collect, potential evidence. Um, if you're watching on the playback, uh, leave a comment and uh, let us know what you think and tell us about your devices too. Mm -hmm. All right. Guys, we don't use all of them. There's a ton no. of devices out there. We're just going to be sharing the ones that we yeah. kind of use primarily. Yeah, we're going to start off explaining the ones that we use as we travel. And then kind of extend a little bit more some of the other pieces that we pull out if we're doing the full investigation. And I have room in the car to haul everything. And not have to worry about TSA or taking it on a plane or anything like that. So Yeah. All right. So uh, you want to see who's here? Say hello, who's here? Sure. Let me pull that right up. Uh, we have Cliff Riser. We have A. Joe. We have Happy Trails Hiking, Inspire John. Jonathan Sims, Lori Bryant, my mom, Annette, uh, Marty's crew, Our Family Adventures, Mia Mina McDonald, Patricia Faulkner, Rebel Rocker, Samantha Aguirre, Supernatural Lost Adventures, and we also had uh, a little bit ago, he must not have said anything for a while, we also had... Um, uh, Andrew was here. Oh, Andrew Kitchens. That's right. Just saw him a little bit ago. He yes, was over at the house. He was here. A Joe says, even though I can't stay long, I'm here to smash the like button on you guys and say thank you for all of your hard work. Well, we appreciate thank that. A Joe, appreciate it very much and uh, welcome and stay as long as you can. And if you can't, that's perfectly fine. Yes. Thank you for stopping by. And Pusha Studios has just popped in the room as well, jumping in to say hello to us, too. All right. Hello, hello, everybody. All right, so let's get started because we want to get done by 7-ish. So we're going to send everybody over to Pusha. That's right. Uh, who's starting at 7 o'clock. So we want to be done and out of here and ready to roll. That's right. All right? Yeah, it's been that kind of day. Everybody's been... Been a YouTube day, huh? It has. I've been a YouTube junkie today. <laughs> so are you guys ready to get started? You guys in chat, if you're ready to get started, give us a yes. And we can get started on our little tools that we have all over the table here. <laughs> 
Marty's crew says, I was informed there would be proton packs. Uh, hello. Have you seen Boris? Boris is wearing a proton Boris pack. Boris is sporting a nice little tiny proton pack. <laughs> would you like to cover the proton pack in case people have to leave? I know that you want, you want to. It's we just, don't actually own yeah, a proton don't. pack. However, we have the plans for one. That's right. So if I can, if I can score an unlicensed nuclear reactor... <laughs> somewhere in our travels or marianne can find one on ebay we have the plans to build one yes this book right here ghostbusters ectomobile owner's manual actually inside has a whole section on the proton pack there it is inspire john marty's crew there it is the proton pack tells us how to build it uh i guess uh at least what the parts are and then it tells us how to use it in this page. So I'm gonna tell you what it says on how to use it. This is just for you guys. Let's see here. Uh, it says there are two key parts to a proton pack, the main backpack unit and the particle thrower. Uh, that can be holstered to the pack side, carried in hand or latched to a utility belt. The backpack portion of the device, which most people say is the proton pack, uh, that device is where all the magic happens. At the heart of the proton pack's generator is the cyclotron, a round chamber surrounded by a booster frame. Two tube injectors on the side of the pack feed hydrogen particles into the cyclotron, where they are spun from the center outward at an incredible speed by a series of powerful electromagnets. Uh, and they, tr as they travel faster and faster, the particles become positively charged and their energy increases to a point where they form a stream of protonic plasma energy. There you there have you it. Well, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> so in case you want to build your own there, Inspire John, we do have we some, uh, We some have the plans, plans but we don't own one. <laughs> So there you go. That's specifically for Inspire John and Boris even wore his little backpack version uh, for you. <laughs> but again, as Sean said, we don't actually have one no, of these we don't actually that we use one. while we're ghost hunting. So instead, we're going to tell you about the pieces we use for the yeah. rest of the yeah. show. <laughs> we're going to tell you about the uh, small kit and then the large kit. So uh, I think we're ready to get going. Are we ready to get going? Yeah. Inspired John yeah. said, you had me at the cyclotron. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's start with our first item. Uh, while we're here, uh, before we get started on the items, we've had a few people pop in. Budget Bushcraft has joined us. 3D Medic Vince is here, and Dezombified has shown up as well. So nice well, hello, to see you hello, guys. Hello, 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 hello. Dezombified, check your email later. You know what I'm talking about. All right. So. Oh, and Timber Hill Red Bones is here. Timber Hill Red Bone Coonhounds. <laughs> he still likes your old name better. I do. All right. All right. So like I said, those of you who are paranormal researchers, you probably know all this stuff. So if you do, just tell us if you use it too and, you know, the kind of, re, you know, I don't, want, I don't want to say reaction, but what kind of responses and stuff you get. If you don't, we're going to explain all these devices for those who watch our videos but don't understand the equipment that we use. That's the purpose. Yeah. Okay. So the first very important, and this is listed as number one, is our prayer card that we carry with us. Now, uh, most of our videos, you don't hear us say the protection prayer. You did in the Barnheisel one, where I actually did mm -hmm. the opening prayer, and I tried to have the closing prayer, but that last part of that video got cut off. So yeah. in order to practice, you know, and I'm in a lot of live streams, and I hear a lot of people say, aren't you afraid to bring stuff home, and aren't you afraid that something's gonna attach to you? No, because of this number one important item. And we wholeheartedly believe in this. So out of 277 places we've been to, I, I it's safe to say there's nothing here. Yeah. Okay. And another thing I want to mention too, we're only going to turn on one of these pieces of equipment. We don't turn the equipment on inside the house. We don't want to open up any portals or anything in here because our house is sealed and blessed and they can't come in. So that's our beliefs. Okay. And that's why... This is number one, very important, and Mary Ann carries that in her little ghosty bag. I do. I have a ghosty bag, just like, just like Boris here has his little backpack. I have a ghost backpack too. Yep. Carries everything uh, that I take all my stuff in. Okay, 
So let's move on to number two. Like if we had nothing else with us, okay, the number two thing that we carry are these little digital recorders. His and hers. His and hers. Marianne <laughs> carries this red Sony, mm -hmm. which originally was mine, but I gave it to her. Yes. And I carry an Olympus, okay? Um, this is actually my second Olympus. The first one I actually wore out. Um, but, and then I got another one to replace it. Now, let's talk about the recorders for a second. Every time we go someplace, well, most cases, last couple of times, you forgot to have it. But in most cases, Mary Ann's recorder is running nonstop the whole time we were there. Yeah. I, on the other hand, do burst sessions. And what that means is if we go into an area that we know that there, there are par paranormal claims, I will just turn it on for you know, 10, 15 minutes while we're there and then shut it off so that we don't have to listen back in real time all of the recordings from both recorders. Yeah, I like to have something that runs the entire length because sometimes, you know, we're traveling in between one room and another and you might pick something up or or we like verification of things. And so right. if we have two, we can we can yeah. do that. We could do a little cross check. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what we are trying to pick up is what's called EVP or electronic voice phenomena. OK, now this was actually found by Thomas Edison and, and those guys working on the sound way back when where under the white noise, when you listen to these recorders, you can actually hear whispers or voices. And what we are listening to on the playback is like a whisper that's like, it's almost like a reverse, like somebody sucking backwards while they're talking. And if we capture that, uh, we call it a potential EVP, electronic voice phenomena. Now on our channel, we have some videos with just those in it, but that's what we mostly catch. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah. Now Mia wants to know if we find that there are differences in what the two different recorders find. Yes. Yes. Because they're two different brands. Um, this one has a little bit. Has I think it has more white noise. Yeah. It has a little bit more white noise. This one is a little bit more um, like it tries to focus in on the sound a little bit better. Thank you well, so hey, much. Joe, hey, Joe. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. That. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so yeah, there is a difference between the brands. That's why we actually have two separate brands um, because you do hear a little bit of difference. Now, if we are doing a full blown investigation, we also have these two. In the Barnhausel video, you guys saw this one. This this recorder right here can actually hear, you know. He likes to say it here, it's a fly. Yeah, you can hear burp. a fly burp with this one. <laughs> this one is very detailed. Uh, it is a H4N. Uh, zoom so some of you guys out there that are in the, the music realm or audio recording you guys have seen these before um, these get very intense but it, not as much white noise right on and, this and I don't feel we get as many no. EVPs on there no, we hear we everything else that's happening but I don't feel that we get a lot on that not not very many uh, sometimes we do, but we normally use this like if we're trying to record footsteps or something like yeah. that that's been heard, right. we normally use that. And and the tool is based on the reports, too, the paranormal claims as to what tool we're going to pull out. Now, another recorder that we use, too, and this, again, was in the Barnheisel video. Andrew was using this one. This is a real-time EVP digital recorder. Well, it's a digital recorder. We It's you know, we're trying to capture EVPs. It's made by the same company as that big one, but you can also. <laughs> Thank you, Inspired John. <laughs> They've been passing this dollar ninety five right. around today. All right. Thank you. Um, this one, you can actually put headphones on and actually hear the recording while it's happening. So this is actually kind of a uh, cool device too. So that is EVP when we're trying to co uh, collect electronic voice phenomena. Does anybody have any questions about that? Well, we did have one from, uh, I believe it was also from Mia. Let me go back. Yes, do you ever use voice activated recorders? This one does have voice, voice activation in it. And we have and another, I have one, another one in there, those real expensive um, ones that only record when there's voice activation. 
we don't we really haven't used them yet not too much you've used you know, them like a couple times like i said marianne's recording constantly and i'm doing burst sessions so um get my my bag out okay we really haven't used just the voice activation but we've been with others like when we were at the madison and adam uh gimbal kimball used the voice activation one and it's, it's really cool but haven't got that far yet all right any other questions um not at this time it's uh timber hill says looks like a taser <laughs> yeah. yeah those are actual audio recorders and What's nice is they'll record, and both of them have the ability where you just flip this up. It's a USB. You can put it on a computer, and I can copy the files over. So, yeah, pretty nice. So I was going to grab that, but this is not on the list, but this is in my bag for me. I have this thing where I attract every mosquito in a five-mile area. So if we're doing any outside work, I got to put one of these on or else I'll be, like, yeah. totally blotchy the next day because they eat me alive yeah all right so um another thing that we use quite often and quite a bit is um digital photography marianne eventually we're going to do a video and marianne's going to show you how to do forensic photography there's actually a skill to that in a certain way you take pictures but there's also a method for taking photography for paranormal investigations do you want to explain that because that's mainly what you do well basically for paranormal investigations you want to try to get a baseline picture so like i always go in the places first uh when we get there and i take pictures of pretty much everything in the room uh, that's the forensic photography part so that i can go back later and uh draw out a, a diagram of the building and things like that um it also helps to identify where there were windows, anything that might have a reflection ability, that kind of stuff. And then once you're actually doing the investigation itself, the idea is to take at least three pictures without moving in succession as fast as you can to see if you ca ca caught something, if it's moving, if it's a reflection on something, that kind of thing. Yeah, lens idea. flare, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And you'll see that in the progression of the pictures. So I'm getting some questions over here that you're I'm not. Getting. Yeah, and I'm getting some questions over here that you're not getting, so. Okay. Uh, I see the one from Charlie Gordon and says, I am broke. What is a good phone app uh, that is good to use? That is a good question. Oh, okay. that's the same one that I just okay. got. Okay. That is a very good question. We don't use phone apps, but I know there are some good ones out there to use. Any phone app that will utilize the sensors in your phone whether it's like temperature or um, proximity or um, you know, like a compass reading or anything like that, any app that will utilize that, I feel is a good app to use, okay? Now, when we start talking about the Ovilus and things like that, other apps may come into play for you as well if you're using with them within the content of a paranormal investigation. And I'm, and I'm gonna explain that here in a second. Yeah. Okay, I hope that answers the question, but... Uh, and if they work with it being an airplane mode, that's even better because you want to try to avoid any contamination from any other places as well. So um, that's something to look into as well for those apps. Yes. Uh, Mia, uh, Mia asks, uh, I know you download digital recordings to your computers. Have you used the analog ones that actually have tape in them? For a paranormal investigation, no, we have not. Um, reason being is we've done so many. We've been to two, what I tell you, 277 locations. Some of the locations multiple times. Some of them full investigations multiple times, which means hours upon hours, multiple devices. For me to have a tape and transfer it to digital, did all that, it'll never happen. So I don't have a tape recorder. I would love to do that if I had the time. You know, once we slow down and start going back to a place to use the analog tape, because it's supposed to be better mm -hmm. as far as picking up yeah. um, uh, EVPs. Uh, let's see. I have a Zoom recorder too. Cool. Um, should I be afraid of the dark as I am at my age? Absolutely not. Don't it's okay. You don't have to be afraid of the dark. 
that little booby man under the bed, you just tell him to go away. Yeah, leave me alone. Um, uh, mosquitoes, talking about mosquitoes. Um, do you have a speed for your pictures? As speed. fast as it can go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the aperture settings and all that other stuff? No. We no. just leave them to the auto settings. Yeah. The camera that we have is a Sony. Uh, I don't know the model number off the top of my head, but it takes very good pictures in low light. Mm -hmm. um, and we that's like a two for, for us because sometimes you go to a museum and they don't allow flash photography, but this one will take them. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. My good, yeah. my good Nikons don't do that very well i was very disappointed on the queen mary with that one yeah uh i would went to take a picture and it's like too low light and i'm like but that's okay <laughs> yeah so uh timber hill redbone said um that we used something to tase boris and now we're hiding the evidence uh-oh yeah he needs a little <laughs> tasing from now and then all right so is like i said this is the only vice device that i will turn on in our house Okay, and this is the K2 meter. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this here a little bit. Um, a K2 meter will detect what's called EMF, electromagnetic field. And the theory behind electromagnetic field is twofold. Uh, a spirit or entity or entity can use elect electronic. Ah. Oh can't talk here we go i wasn't listening electromagnetic to electromagnetic field to as energy to either manifest or as they are man manifesting they can put off electromagnetic field okay now everything on earth including the earth and ourselves puts off electromagnetic field so this device will record from 1.5 to 20 plus milligauss i think it's milligauss maybe it's megagauss Okay, and as the lights light up, it's more intense. Okay, so I got a little fan here, and I'm just going to demonstrate. You can see see it lighting up. So this little fan is putting off an EMF field right there. See that? Is that coming on the camera? I yeah. do believe it is. So when you have this device sitting off by itself on green. And as you're trying to communicate with spirits, if it starts going bleep, 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 you know, that kind of thing. The theory is, is that we're, we're talking with something or the EMF field is passing over this device. Okay. And that's a little technical, but this is, if you heard me tell our story, how we got into the paranormal when we were at the lighthouse. Yes. Okay. This is the device that I told him. Nah, I don't need one of those. I'm not, you know, I gave you enough money. It was a K2 meter. Now we own, what, seven of them? At least, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So I use this a lot. Sometimes we could set up like two or three of them and say, could you light that one the green or that one the orange or that one the yellow and use that as yes or no responses too as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this did, is a very good device. Did you say you put one on one side of the room and one on the other side of the room? I just okay. said that, yes. I was yeah. reading the chat, so okay. I'm trying to multitask. <laughs> so that's the K2 meter. I like this, too, when we travel because it's small. Um, I could put it right in my pocket. We do have one that I seen the grab when we go, when we try to he do does. some incognito type. And it, and it, catch, and it, it gets has a, caught every time. It has a sensor on it that when the temperature changes, it, it, it puts off an audible beep. I seem to grab that one every time. Yes, yeah, so and then it'll just go. Yeah. And, and, and it's incessant until you turn it off and turn it back on. <laughs> All right. So the theory behind EMF is twofold. Like I said, either the spirits can use EMF to manifest or as they are manifesting, they, they emit an EMF field. Now, I will tell you this. Cell phones. Cell phones will set these things off. Walkie-talkies will set these off. You just saw the fan set this off. Electrical, bad grounds. That kind of thing will set this thing off and create what's called an electromagnetic magnetic field cage or a fear cage. Long-term exposure to EMF can cause hallucinations. You know, like people saying, hey, I saw a spirit, or I saw uncle so-and-so that passed away a long time ago walking through. <clears throat> when we were doing residential, 
one thing that we did was sweep the house with these things to see if there was an EMF issue. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. That's really important with paranormal investigation is EMF. So uh, we had a question on where can you get one of those. I just dropped a link to one location you can get it. You can get it pretty much anywhere that sells any ghost hunting equipment. You can also just go just down to like your hardware store and get an EMF detector because they yeah. do use these in building construction uh, and for um, electricians and things like yeah. that because they're looking Check for that the as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can get those pretty much anywhere uh depends on what they look like sometimes they won't look just like this uh i did send you a link to the to the one that looks just like this yeah. one but these are uh, actually built in st augustine florida yes so. yeah so, so bottle right says so you're saying dead people have emf farts absolutely yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> just in different words yeah <laughs> All right, so that's the K2 meter. Everyone get that because you're going to see me using those. You probably have seen me use those in, in some of our videos. And point out, What's going on with that? That's that you saw the fan. Yeah. Neil wants so. to know if cameras will set that off. Uh, the flash, the flash will set it off. But it has, you saw how close I had to be. it has to be pretty close. Yeah. yeah. You saw how close I had to be with the fan to set it off, you know? So if you're holding it right up to a flash, it will spike. Yeah. Like see how it's spiking. But you know, but back a, here. Yeah. From a distance, it doesn't seem to. Yeah. Th these are it. really sensitive. Yeah. It doesn't seem to really affect it very much. I tend to t try to take pictures of it when it's doing that uh, at an investigation. Video is better. Yeah. Video is much better um, because mm. it's like. By the time you get the camera focused on it at a distance that's safe for it, it kind of stops doing it. They they know. <laughs> okay, so that brings us to this device. You're going to see us using, you've probably seen it use this a lot or mention it, the Ovilus. Okay, we have an Ovilus 4. Now, um, whoever asked the question about apps, there are apps that you can get that work like an Ovilus. What an Ovilus does is it takes the EMF in conjunction with temperature and it pulls a word out of the dictionary based on that frequency and the temperature now there's a lot of controversy in the paranormal field and everything about these that they're just a parlor device you know it's just a trick that that's randomly spitting out words it does randomly spit out words because if you randomly pick up an, an EMF spike it will randomly throw out a word However, this is what I'm talking about if it's in the course of a paranormal investigation, session, questioning, whatever. If you're getting words that are part of the, the questions and conversation, that gets a little interesting. We just had that happen at Fort Necessity mm -hmm. with it saying rocket after we the talk, park manager was talking talk about. Park ranger. Park ranger was yeah. talking about a guy named Rocket. And it said rocket. Yeah, we also had great. that at uh, Gettysburg when we were driving through the battlefield where it said Southern Coffin. You know, it, it, even though it randomly will pick something, why did it pick those words? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. We we always call everything potential evidence. We don't say it is. Right. It's interesting. That's why we want to put it out there and see what you guys' thoughts are. That's the ovulus. We love this thing. And this helps too, like to do an EMF sweep. The barn heisel we swept that hole upstairs so we knew where to go back and do some more investigations so uh phone apps will do that same thing yeah so um mia says oh that reminds me someone i heard say that the devices work better when someone is holding them mm, it'll work either way um there's a theory that uh, we call it the the uh, Ouija board theory uh, that like dowsing rods and the planchette on the Ouija board and all that other stuff that it's channeled through the person doing the session that's causing that those things. We personally don't use a Ouija board or dowsing rods or anything like that because it can be manipulated, you know, just by fucking a wrist or moving stuff. Yeah. 
A lot of people like those dowsing rods. It is not right. something that I would ever. So want like to use. the K2 meters and stuff like that. I like if I'm picking something up. I like to sit it down by itself and see if it still picks things up. And if it does, then that's interesting to right. me. I know it's not coming off of me, but you know, there's people that do it another way too. It, we don't know. This is all in theory anyway. So you know, whatever works better. I I, I would see if somebody was sensitive or, or some sort of medium how they were channeling those devices and make them work yeah i get that but i'm i'm not that way <laughs> no way i mean like come on man i come all this way can you just blink that light light up just once so yeah yeah that is um that is something that you try to uh try to get them to do so the last device that we kind of carry all these devices so far except for the big recorders marianne carries with her well, because she has a more. purse basically or i shove them in my pockets or something like that so we could do this while we're traveling or walking around a city or something like that the other one that we carry you guys have seen me use this several times is i call it the spirit box okay but this is the sb7 and you've probably seen a lot of paranormal channels where they turn this on and they sit and do EVP sessions and stuff like that. Let me explain what's going on with these devices, okay? You'll see some others too that are modified radios. Um, radio Shack has a, a model too that could be modified to make it sweep. This device was actually designed to be a ITC device, which is for paranormal research. And what it does, it'll sweep through radio frequencies, either FM or AM. And as it sweeps, it adds white noise. So you've heard these, or these is a, this is that thing that's real loud. It goes, ch -ch 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 -ch. Marianne hates it. Um, that white noise, this device actually adds that white noise because again, the theory behind it is that the spirits can use that white noise to communicate. Now, um, I've seen people make comments on our streams when you use this. It's like, just that's just a radio. Let me explain this a little bit. You could set this at 100 milliseconds, 150 milliseconds, 200, up to 300. We use 200 milliseconds, which means every time you hear that, ch it's going to another station. So it switches stations at 200 uh, every two-tenths, what is that, one-fifth of a second it's going to a different station so when you hear a word or a series of words in our videos where it says something over multiple stations that is the spirits using again potentially using that white noise to communicate and if you get a sentence that's pretty cool especially if you get like swearing which we have got <laughs> you know over these devices so uh this yeah, device that's not will, a lot on the radio yeah that's not a lot on radio so this device will sweep forward or backwards am or fm you can adjust the volume and we always set them at 200 milliseconds because we're just comfortable with our ears for about five ten minutes at that rate yeah marty says uh marty's crew says that would that loud thing that would get annoying i think and yeah i can't it stand does. it 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 is awful and for me I can sometimes there hear that it said something, but I have no idea what it said. And you're, that's the whole point of those things, yeah. so that you can we figure it out. We actually hear it better I, when we play the video. On the back. playback, yeah. Um, we did have one more question. It says, why do some people call the spirit box an EVP box? Is that another name? Uh, electronic voice phenomenon. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. They call them spirit box, Frank box. Uh, it's all the same theory. Um, yeah. It's using that changing of stations and that white noise um, to allow the spirits to communicate. Now, another device that we have that I use this, especially when we were in Gettysburg, is a SB11, okay? So this is kind of works the same as SB7. You go forward, backwards, change the rates, all that other stuff. But this one has some additional functions on it. This will, um, you can set the temperature rate. So if the temperature fluctuates, it'll, it'll alarm. Um, it has a light, which the batteries are probably out of it at, yeah, at the moment. Yeah, you're not going to turn that on um, anyway. No, I was going to turn the light on. Oh, okay. um, uh, But it also has two channels. It has a left and a right channel. So you can set one on AM, one on FM, make one go forward, one go backwards, do all kinds of stuff with this. And I like the speaker better than that one. The other one, I have to have an external speaker to hear it. This one, you don't. 
So we have that to yeah. too. And A. Joe is heading out. Uh, thank you so thank much you for, for joining coming. us. And thank you again for your donation. Yes, thank um, you. Let's see here. Cliff Riser says, I get that most afternoons with the thunderstorms. Does that mean there could be communication through the white noise from the static electricity? Uh, it's possible, but thunderstorms, I will tell you, will charge the air. Um, it'll it'll um, charge the air with ions, which is very good for paranormal investigation. It, it stirs up that EMF field, so to speak. And here's another thing, too. Most people investigate at night, okay? And besides being a creepy factor, okay, but at night you have less contamination of the regular world, cars and stuff driving by. But also at nighttime, you're at the end of, you know, the earth is picking up most of the solar energy and it's charging the atmosphere up too. So that that helps too with uh, paranormal communications however it doesn't always have to be at night we've got stuff broad day noon yep. you know it yep. doesn't matter it can happen at any time yeah. so so we have a couple more questions um does it matter if you're using am or fm um not really um sometimes if i'm not sometimes if i'm not getting anything i'll switch around you know be, because it's not am fm it's frequencies is is what it is you know an am radio and fm radio are on different frequencies of channels so it's the frequency that the spirits are trying to use to communicate so it doesn't really matter sometimes i'll switch around change the speed up or something like that um, just to see if we get anything and then a lot of times quite honest with you a lot of times we'll get nothing you know very so, very true and then other times very. it's like party time yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a good point that you bring up. A lot of times we don't get anything. We'll yeah. go somewhere and get nothing. Yeah. It's supposed to be one of the most active places in the world and we get nothing on any of our pieces of equipment at all. You know. So Stanley Hotel, we were there for hours and hours. We got one little EVP on that recorder the whole time we were there. We did get some pictures. Uh, but as far as EVP recordings, yeah. hours, we listened and listened and listened and listened. <laughs> oh, come on. There's got to be something. Listen, listen. We've got one little EVP. Yeah. And, you know, that's the Stanley Hotel. So you're not, you know, they're, they were humans. They're not going to act on cue. You know, hey, we're here. Let's do it now. No. They, you know, they're people. They get, yeah. They get and they were probably sleeping at that time, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I would be. You know. All right, so some of the equipment that we do use if we if we have the chance to do a full investigation. Now, what that means is we are either on a public hunt with somebody or we've rented the place out and we have it all night to ourselves and we get set up and do a full-blown investigation. We have night vision cameras that we use. We have trail cams that we use. If you heard Marianne tell the story about the orphanage where I sent her downstairs to get a camera, it was a trail cam that we set up down there. Um, those work, you know, if you guys know anything about trail cams, they work on motion. So if we get pictures, you know, setting that trail cam up with the, with the motion, it could be something going on. Uh, we have a DVR system. Um, we haven't used that in a while, but we do have uh, six cameras that we can wire the whole place. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually oh, wired one of the locations. He's in the living room. I can go get him. Okay. Uh, but we actually wired one of the locations because we went there so often. We wired yeah, we it left for our wire video there. camera system. Yeah. Now they've closed down, but we left all our stuff there anyway. But Ron um, A says he has an S box and he likes it a lot. That's yes. the next thing on my list is the S box, and I want to get that. And I know that PSPR has a affiliate link to get that, and I'm going to uh, get that next. Um, it's on sale, so it's time to get it. Now, also, too, if there are reports of shadow figures or we've experienced shadow figures at, at, at some place, shadow figures, not fingers, uh, we also like to use the laser grid. Okay. And then you could see if something breaks. Something breaks the lasers, break. like something walking by. You can see the shadows. 
So we got that. Um, I just brought Boo there's Bear. There's Boo Bear. Bear. Sean doesn't like Boo Bear. No, he, Boo Bear is freaky. He talks and says different things, and different parts of his little belly and things light up. Um, so he doesn't <coughs> like him. He only has so many phrases that he makes, um, but they're based on environmental conditions. Like he'll say, "It's get." Is it cold in here if it if the, like the temperature drops or it's getting um, warm in here if the temperature if, rises right yeah, that kind of thing. right or that tickles if something touched it that kind of thing yeah so. um, we also have a mel meter um, we've used that at the what's the the house it begins with an F in Gettysburg. Farnsworth? Farnsworth House. Um, it's in those videos. You see my meter that I get out and I put down. The Mel meter is a little bit more detailed than a K2 meter to detect EMF, and it also has a temperature sensor on it. So if the temp temperature fluctuates, you know, goes up and down. If the temperature drops, that's a theory, is as a entity is trying to communicate or manifest, the temperature will drop. It'll get colder. We've experienced that. We've been out on um investigations with other people and they're like man i am like cold so i have another thing that's like one of them temperature guns with the laser that you shoot it i hit one side it's like you know 98.6 the other one's like at 60 you know you could you could just pull those readings off of there um yeah yeah, yeah. that's a good segue temperature gun <laughs> um by the way, uh, Marty's crew says maybe the spirits at places like the Stanley are tired of EVP sessions. It could be. Yes. I, it could be. I would say that's a good possibility. And Mia says that uh, with her background, this is very interesting. She's an electrical engineer with a specialization in computer engineering. So this tech is really cool for her. So you understand the language I'm dropping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you um, understand. And the real death would like to know if we've ever tried the Xbox the xbox connect uh no i don't have one um, and i won't let him buy one she won't let me get one <laughs> i have literally thousands of dollars invested and in, i mean this this recorder right here was like yeah he would just want to play with yeah. the xbox connect this on a was, regular this basis was too and he'd never get right any there. videos so um <laughs> but no i've i've seen them work it would be cool to have one but no i don't have one and actually, we talked about the group that we were in. We were going to go together and get one, and that kind of like fell apart. But um, yes, but we we know a couple people who have used them before, yes. yeah. um, and they seem to like them. Um, I think it's really creepy when you when you watch those videos and they're alone, and like all of a sudden there's like something, something next appears. to them, you know. <laughs> and you got to remember too, most of our investigations that we do, we do while we're traveling. You right. know, so like just recently when the videos we just put out, we were out running around all day. So, you know, there's only so much that we can carry with us. Right. Xbox Connect would require a lot more electric uh, <laughs> and all that other stuff. A lot yeah. more help. Yeah. So, uh, and actually, we also use a compass. We can use a compass because if that electromagnetic field is messed with, we can set a compass on it. You can actually see the compass spinning. Spin? which is interesting it just all of a sudden starts spinning yeah crazy. we've had that happen before but we weren't doing video then yeah you know well we got pictures of it but now that we have video camera we'll have to try that at some place and get that on video that is pretty impressive um, we've also used baby powder yes baby powder is a good one yeah we're going to do another video on how you can actually go paranormal investigation do a paranormal investigation with items from a dollar store i know We've done that. We have uh, a presentation yes, for that. Yes, we did a presentation yeah. at um, a Halloween party one yeah. time on that. And we also did that, I think, at a library once. We Yeah. We so here's that. an example. Like this grid right here. I had a bad habit of losing these things. He leaves okay? those things places. All right. So another thing that you could do with this, if you're going down a long hallway and there's reports of shadow figures, like at Hillview, you can also use gaffer's tape and glow sticks and put them down at the end of the hallway and see if anything breaks that. You yeah. can get those at the dollar store. Yes, you can. So yeah. That's an example. We, we'll have to do a video on that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There was something. Um, I have to turn this back I lost it. Uh, Charlie Gordon uh, wanted to know if we have Skype. They'd like to chat sometime. 
Oh, we have all kinds of stuff. Make sure you join our uh, Facebook group or follow us on Twitter or shoot us an email or anything like that. If anybody has our link, anybody has our link to our Facebook group or Twitter or no, anything I don't like have, that. I don't have that. Let me pull it off. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> uh, there was something else to uh, in, in there. Uh, something about something was turned off for two years and came back on. It was said, "I'm tired." I that was too happy trails hiking, but I it, I lost the beginning. I don't know what that kind of went with. Okay. Um, but you can continue on, and I will. Well, I only have three more you. things to talk about, and then we we'll get turn it over to chat. Have you talked about these yet? No. Go ahead and tell them about the well, flashlights. Well, I was going to get the link for you. you That's all right. Okay. Go ahead. Talk about the flashlights. we got 15 minutes. Okay. Well, we use, we use flashlights, mog-like flashlights, um, because you can kind of turn those on and put them right at the edge of being on or not. Uh, and there is controversy with these as well. Pretty much any paranormal investigative item there's controversy with but um, some people say oh it just turns on naturally mm -hmm. after so long or whatever but um, we like to set one on one side of the room one on the other side of the room and they're two um, separate two colors two separate colors say hey, turn the red one on uh, if it, the answer is this or turn the blue one on if the answer is that or make the left side of the room you know this color or turn on or whatever and so um, that's kind of how we use them mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a like an answering device uh, any yes or no questions uh you true can false, yes, true no. false yeah 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 so. all right so happy trails got it she beat you to it she got me to it oh yeah. so i don't have to look anymore thank no. you happy trails okay. um so the last three things that we use that is kind of like it depends on where we're going <laughs> oh nice marty's crew said it was her ex's his ex's uh, Furby. Furby. Jeez. <laughs> That's awesome. Freaky dolls. Yeah. Um, trigger objects. Okay. If we're doing something in Gettysburg, of course, Civil War related items. This thing is also a trigger object. We also have a little bag if we, there's reports of children. You know, we carry little matchbox cars and things like that. Um, trigger music. Coins, cards, if it's someplace where they're going to be doing. Uh, you want to play cards, cards? So sit down, play cards. I'll, yeah. I'll deal cards out. I have hardtack that I made in one of our videos. Uh, old fashioned hardtack. Uh, and we can kind of take that. We actually intend to take that with us next time we go to Gettysburg. Yeah. Um, trigger music that's a lot of time overlooked too uh, we had great response uh, in Gettysburg that's what stirred everything up at East Cemetery Hill we were playing uh, uh, period music and um, got the spirits over it, it kind of made them more comfortable and come talk with us that kind of thing and then also our favorite and we have a video out there about it is trigger conversations <clears throat> that's why we cover the history of locations is that we'll just sit and you know say hey you know according to the history this happened and you had this you know store and sold these things did you like doing that and just having conversations mm -hmm. that and this is our approach okay others have different approaches and they you could do it either way our approach is try to get the spirits comfortable with us so they'll come over and communicate yeah. Uh, Charlie so that's Gordon, pretty much it. Charlie Any Gordon, questions? Charlie Gordon said that when he lived in Oklahoma, he was part of a paranormal investigative team, and they did the flashlight trick, and it worked well. I will tell you that the flashlight works really well at Hillview Manor. Yeah. They on, on the first floor, it works better than any of the other floors. Um, but down in uh, One North, uh, one it, it works really well. Uh, near the near the uh, nurses station in the the couple of rooms along there that work really well, uh, and then also in Mary Virginia's room. If you ever go to Hillview, um, those two places they love the flashlights, and Mary Virginia also loves the trigger music. She loves listening to a certain nursery rhyme. Yeah, we have that video out there yeah. too that you can see it, and it's pretty cool. So, so happy trails hiking. Does it make sense now? Is there something else that I need to cover? I want to ask her because she's the one that asked to make sure that okay. I covered everything. That was like really quick, 40, probably 45 minutes going over everything the that basics, we have. The basics, yeah. The basics. But. Yeah. Um, I, I also take a journal with me. I write a lot of stuff down. Uh, and I was kind of, I pulled out. Times. Times. We heard things. this noise, this time. We write it down so we pick it up on a recorder. Right. And Lacey I, sees crazy life adventures. Hello, how are you? And I, we said that I like to make 
diagrams of the buildings. So here's one of them from one of the places that I was at. Um, I had another one that I kind of put in here, but I don't know where it went to. I thought I had it, but uh, anyhow, uh, I, I kind of do those and definitely always have something to write down because you might want to write down your experience um, so that you don't forget where you were or not that you're going to, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you might forget that stuff too. Anybody else have any questions? Does that all make sense now? If you saw our videos and understand what's going on. Eddie and Jen, the vlogs, and then some, says, uh, was wondering if you can tell me some good cemeteries in the Youngstown and Boardman area to investigating. They're visiting Akron and thought about us. Well, get a hold of us. We are in the Youngstown Boardman <laughs> area. Yeah. Um, Oak. Oak Hill Cemetery. Oak Hill Cemetery, definitely. Uh, that's a that's a big one, um, and we've even had some success. Not a ton, but we've had some success over at um, Calvary Cemetery. Yeah, yeah. We're Those gonna be doing two. more over at Calvary over here, but Oak Oak Hill Oak Hills got some of the older there. That, yeah, that's where all the really old graveyard uh, graves are uh, in our area. They were. They even have John Hillman, uh, who. Um, was one of the founders of the area. It was John Young was actually technically the founder, but John Hillman basically ran the place. Yeah. So his, his grave is there. So Happy Trails Hiking says, I understand what all the things do now. I want to see them in person. There you go. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Marty's crew says he wants to see them in person as well. Right. I would love to take you guys on an investigation. We would have a blast. Especially if we got some sort of activity. What are you doing now? Oh, they said they, a couple of them said they requested to join the group, so I was just going to go oh, ahead okay. and, and say okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see where we are. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie and the Gen Vlogs. Yeah, if you're in the area. I have three more days. Three more work days and I'm on vacation. Do, 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 do. Yes. All right, we have eight minutes. All right, there we go. We got you that, are confirmed. We got that link ready for Pusha Studios. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I wanted to do it as a live so that we could answer questions. This was a lot more fun than making a video and just posting it. <laughs> yeah. Um Let's see if there did we miss anything else in the chat. I hope not. If we if we missed a question that you had or anything, yeah, ask uh, it again. Ask it again. We've been trying to monitor it, but we do miss a few things here or there. Um, Marty's crew says um, his daughter would be too scared to go through to go though. Um, you'd be surprised. Kids love this stuff. Yeah. And they're and they're good trigger objects too, <laughs> uh, because a lot of times they, you know, and they can focus. Children like teens, teenies, I call them teenies, teen like boppers. you know, ten to tweenies. fifteen. I think those tweenies. are called tweens. Yeah, sixteen and above, not so much, but ten to fifteen. We've had them on investigations, and they they if they're into it, they focus on it there's no playing around there's no yeah and they get upset when you start playing around and, and like okay it's break time oh really yeah. really yeah yeah i gotta take a break i've been listening to this thing for an hour i gotta go get a piece of pizza <laughs> all right well uh happy trails ha says that she has a video coming out with marty's crew at seven tonight so uh, make awesome. sure you stop by and visit her channel today for that um, we're going to, uh, go over to Pusha, uh, after this, but, um, you can certainly go over to Happy Trails as well and watch her video. Uh, she can put the link in for that. Um, yeah, if you got, oh, she's uploading, so I don't oh, know if you, yeah, yet. she wouldn't oh, have the link yet. Oh, it might not be there yet. No. Okay. Uh, so there's the link for Pusha's, uh, stream. Yeah, let's try Parapeeps, Parapeeps Raid. Let's give that a, a try. If you guys are going heading over to Pusha, let's do a hashtag para peeps raid. Oh, I got an error. I didn't. I got it in. Great. I, I got an error typing in my own chat. <laughs> That's wonderful. 
Uh, let's see here. <laughs> he said, Marty's crew says uh, that two of them would definitely do it. The boys would definitely do it, but the but his daughter would not. But maybe one of the other daughters would. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, and Gemma is here. Hello, Gemma. You said it right. I know. Gemma. I got it now, now that we've got the picture of the gem. Every time I see her, <laughs> I put that. So I can remember it's Gemma. Gemma. And actually, uh, one time I put Jim M.A. As, yeah. Hello, Jim M.A. <laughs> so Gemma. Uh, Charlie Gordon uh, says, do you guys do Paranormal Investigation 101 videos? Occasionally, we do 201 we videos. We do 201 videos. <laughs> then we have a playlist on our channel called Ghost Hunting 201. Um, and it's just kind of like maybe going to the next level. The one oh the one on one stuff, I'm gonna be perfectly one hundred percent honest with you. Watch our investigation videos. Watch what we do. Um the two oh one videos we're we're trying to like enhance so it hits paranormal and non paranormal, just giving suggestions the way we do it and give some additional ideas. Like we wanna do one on like E V P questions that we ask. You know, and stuff of like that. Like that dollar store ghost hunting, you know. Yeah, the dollar store ghost hunting things and stuff like that. But if you really want to know how how to do an investigation, it's really quite simple. We like to know going in, we like to know the history. Yeah, some some people Shocker, don't paranormal <laughs> panic D paranormal history. Some people don't. They like to go in cold. Right. We like to know. First thing you do before you go in and start is that protection prayer. And when you're done end with one as yeah. well you say the protection prayer before you start then you go in and you could just start talking to whoever you know and ask them if you know the history you can ask those questions if you know the names of the people who's been there you say hey are you here would you like to come and talk to me and you know i heard you like this and that kind of stuff then when you leave we have a closing prayer that we say and then we tell them, you got to stay here. You can't follow us home because we want to come back and see you again. Exactly. And it's worked every time mm -hmm. so far. So the opening and closing. The closing is really is really important, too, because, you know, like if you do a Ouija board or something in your house and you don't close that portal out, that's why people get poltergeist activity. Yeah. yeah. Mia says she would like to see how to debunk things that are found. Um, I love doing that. That's my favorite part. Uh, my favorite one uh, is actually uh, where we we were told that there's this sound, this dun dun sound that happens in the basement, uh, and the people hear it all the time. I went there. I heard it. Sean heard it. We're like, oh my gosh, yeah. wow! Uh, and then like I went upstairs one level higher. Um, and I was investigating up there and I heard it again, but louder. And I'm like, wait a minute. And so I was checking out and doing things and I finally figured it out that same very night that it was actually a manhole cover in the road that if the if a car came across it at just the right <laughs> angle, it would make that boom, boom sound. And, um, and I showed it to the owner and I'm like, this, this is what this is. It's nothing paranormal. Yeah. Um, so I do love to do those kinds of things. That's awesome. Another thing that we do too, which I guess would be a 101, um, when we start the sessions on the recorders, we tag them. And every time there's a sound that we hear, like, oh, that's a motorcycle or there's something going by or a car or something like, we'll tag that in the recording when we, when we hear it while the session is going on so that when we do the playback, you know, oh, okay, that's what that was. Or Sean sneezed. Sean yeah, especially stepped if, on this. Sean especially grunted. If we, uh, Sean think stomach. That maybe we might not listen to it for a while, and we might yeah. forget what what it was too. Um, that's helpful as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Eddie and Jen are going to head over to those cemeteries that we mentioned this weekend. All right, so that's awesome. All, All right. right, so you got the link again for Pusha. They are going to start probably in one minute. All right, and don't forget that uh, we'll be going over there with the hashtag Parapeep Raid. Parapeep Raid. Okay. WD right. Rolls. Well, thank you very much, and we enjoy having you. Appreciate that. All right, so we did a couple of 
real ghost hunting pieces of equipment tonight and what we use. Um, we also did that special one for John because he's, yeah. he's hanging around here too. So that one was just for John. Yeah. All right. So I think that's going to be it. Are we good? Uh, yes. Oh, there's the link and, to Happy Trails. And Happy Trails, Trails has put Why the link in. Why are you seeing it? I don't you know. Saw it. I, I don't see, see it. it Happy Trails has there gotten the link. So excellent. All right. So make sure we've you got check both out of those Happy Trails. I don't have the video clip, but I want to thank uh, our show supporters or our channel supporters, Patreon supporters, which is AJK Services, BUB Unique, Happy Trails Hiking, Lori Bryant, Mark Cole Agency, and Timey Lives. All right. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. All right, folks. Do you have anything else? No, but Boo Buddy says bye too. Boo Buddy says bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. We had fun and we will see you over there at Pooches. So until next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell. So you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting.